All right. We're back. Boom Rusty's played it. Episode six. You know what they say. Episode six, pull out your podcast, podcast equipment. That's the saying. They do say that. Um, what, a, what, a, what a week we've had. What a week. Have we? I don't know. It's been pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, okay. This is. I literally, like, this morning got a, a Snapchat memory thing that triggered a very funny memory from my past. Lay it on me. Um, 20, it was like 2018. It was my freshman year of college. Okay. I was like, got really addicted to sports betting, like right when I got into college. And I was losing like hundreds of dollars a week. I was like really <laughs> bad at it. Like I, I had lost all my money. Like all my money was gone. I was down to like my last like hundred bucks or something. And uh, the week, or I guess I had a few hundred bucks, whatever. The week before Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm asleep and I wake up in the middle of the night. And Con- I was like super into Kanye at this point. I was like huge Kanye guy, which, I- okay, obviously this is before any of, any of that stuff. Yep. Um, but I-, I wake up in the middle of the night and at like 3 a.m. Kanye had tweeted like surprise Yeezy drop, like live now on Yeezy Supply. And I- it was like one minute ago the tweet had come out. So I was like, holy crap, like this is how I'm going to make money. So I-, I spent my last like two-, two-, two of my last $300 on a pair of Yeezys. They were like this new color, the Mauve 700s or something. Sounds sick. I, yeah. I don't know what they are. But, but like in my mind, I'm like, oh, Yeezys are, gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to turn 500 bucks on this. Yep. Like, it was a good play. So I go back to bed, wake up. So I bought them at like three in the morning, go back to bed, wake up in the next day. And he had tweeted like 10 minutes after I bought them, like, this is going to be the biggest Yeezy drop ever. Like Yeezys are for the people. Oh. And they were immediately already worth less than I had bought them for. <laughs> So I was bummed and I was like literally out of money. So I, I fly home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, my buddies are like, Hey, like my high school buddies are like, Hey, let's go get, let's go get lunch. Meanwhile, I'm like trying to, trying to sell these easy. I can't find anyone online. I find this like page for like, it was like eight, four, three kicks. And it was like, yeah, it's like the area code in Charleston. So it was like a, a page in Charleston where they buy and sell sneakers. I was like, DM and I'm like, yo, I got these. Like you want to buy them? And he was like low balling me, but I was like desperate. So I was like, all right, I'm going to meet up with you and sell them. My buddy's like, hey, let's go get lunch. We go to the lunch place. At this point, I have no money in my bank account. So I order food knowing that I'm meeting this kid like during our lunch. Yeah. So I ordered food that I couldn't pay for. And then halfway through the lunch, got up to go meet this kid. So I go down to this like corner we'd agreed to meet on. I'm like standing outside the corner. It's like outside this like sneaker store. A guy like comes out. He's like, can I help you? Like I'm like loitering out there. I was like, <laughs> oh, like I know this is kind of weird, but like I'm meeting this kid to like sell him shoes from online. He's like, oh, Nathan or like whatever the kid's name was. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh man, you're gonna meet that little kid. Like, man, he's a piece of work. Like that little, that little boy is like, he keeps saying all these things that imply that he's like <laughs> little. And I'm like, I, this is a little weird. By selling like, to a dwarf? Yeah. I was like, is it like, what do you mean by little? He's like, oh, that kid's 12 years old. Yeah, <laughs> and so I'm in the. I, I'm. He's like, but but he's cool. You can come wait inside. So I'm just like in the sneaker store waiting. Like my food's getting cold uh, at this restaurant that I had. Like it was like a five minute drive away. And sure enough, this kid shows up and he is literally twelve years old. Comes up on a bike. Uh, yeah. Comes inside and is just like like the biggest hardo about it too. He's like, let me see them. Like I gotta check these, see if they're real. And it was just the most. Like they came out yesterday. What's that? You're like they came out yesterday. Yeah, they're not, they're yeah not like how would I have faked these this quickly? And uh, yeah, it was it was incredibly desperate. He super lowballed me, but I just had like he didn't. Obviously, I didn't. You know, I'm a good negotiator. I wouldn't tell him I needed it to pay for my lunch. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he sold sold them to me for or he bought them for me for like 150 bucks. But my buddy got a picture of the transaction that I sent to Lauren. To- oh, he's fully a child. He is okay. He is an actual child. And you are four feet taller than him. <laughs> like, imagine that kid is like, like, oh, let me check these out, and, he, and then he's like haggling with me, and I'm like, they're pretty insane sneakers. I've never yeah. seen. Them before. Can I ask how much he gave you for them? I think I got like 140 or 150, and that paid 220 or something. It's like an instant loss of almost 100 dollars. At least you could pay for your lunch, though. I mean, you. I did. Here. I did pay for my lunch. What a little businessman. Yeah. Pretty pretty funny. That's awesome. Um, the funny part about that is I'm also wearing Yeezy. I was a big Yeezy guy then. Hmm. Yeah, you should have sold them both. I'm also standing really weird. You yeah. are. If I'd won dessert, I would have sold them the, the <laughs> You're ones You're standing like a dad. I feel like that's such a dad stance. No, that's the stance of a guy who can't 
can't tell this kid like <laughs> I will never financially recover if you don't <laughs> if you don't buy these yeah. sneakers and you're trying not to blow your cover. Kind of a cool sweater I had on. That is a cool sweater. I always will see um see pictures of myself like a couple of years ago wearing the coolest shit. And you're yeah. like, where did that go? Who has it? I think I have that sweater. I might have to pull that out. When I was a I might have, did I already tell you about when I got my car stolen? No. When Recently? I No. When I was a junior in college, I was like at this girl's house and parked her her my car in like a in a nearby parking lot near near her house. And I'm walking back because I had Spanish class, and uh, my car is not there. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, must have gotten towed. Call the call the tow company. They're like, nope, we don't we don't have it. And, but I don't want to admit that my car has gotten stolen until I'm positive. Admit to who? To like the police. Like I didn't okay, want to file right, a police yeah, report yeah. until until I was positive that like I didn't like misplace it or like one of my buddies was driving it, whatever. And so a couple hours go by, I'm like distraught in class, just like my life is crumbling. Like I can't find my car, which yeah. is like a, cr- it's not like your AirPods, like where you're right. like, they'll turn up. Like it's a pretty big thing. It, it's about, probably the biggest thing. It's probably the biggest thing I own. And um, so like the whole weekend goes by. You didn't file a report? No, 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 I filed it later that afternoon. The cops were like, there's nothing we can do, but, like, call all your buddies. Make sure it's none of them. Yeah. Because if we see the car, like, we are dragging the person out, like, at gunpoint. Yeah. Basically being like, so, like, if it's one of your buddies, like, just let them know to, get, to tell you or whatever. No one has it. So, like, th- they also told me it's almost surely scrapped for parts by now. <laughs> like, you'll never see it again. And it's like the worst weekend ever. It's pouring rain the whole time. I get a call at like, I've been, I've been getting prank called all night from like unknown numbers and, and kids like fucking with me. And just because they knew it was like the, no, 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 no not about the card. Oh, just like okay. funny prank calls, whatever. And so like, I finally, I'm like, All right, I'm going to bed. Phone rings at four 30 in the morning, unknown number. I pick up. They're like, Hey, this is the winter park police department. Uh, we have your Jeep if you want to come down and get it. And I'm just like assuming it's a prank call because it's from an unknown number. So I was like, and everyone knew at school. So I was just like, this is someone being an asshole. And I was like, hey, it's actually not funny. I'm still pretty pissed about that. Like, go fuck yourself and hung up. Go back. That's a crazy move. Go back to bed. Phone rings again. Now it's not. It's not an unknown number. They're using the real, the cop's real number. It's a 407 number. He goes, this is actually the Winter Park Police Department. Like, we can impound it or you can come get it. And I'm like, okay, I'll be right down. And we go to this like place. Basically, what had happened was when they hot wired it, yeah. something in the wiring went wrong. And after like a day of them driving it, the horn wouldn't stop going off. <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're driving just down, like presumably just down Aloma or whatever the main road is, and the horn just will not stop going off. So they pull into this neighborhood, ditch it in this guy's like yard. And the neighbors called being like, someone is like <laughs> slamming, someone on is laying on their horn out, <laughs> out in the driveway. Oh and so we go, it's been raining the whole weekend. So it's fi- there's four feet of water, not four feet. It's, it's up to my knees in water because the top wasn't on. They've taken everything out of everything that I had. They've taken and they've replaced with their stuff. So Ooh, like the, the people, people that stole it. stole it. So like I had like, I would keep a pair of flip flops in there. I would keep like shoes like random yeah. shit like sweatshirts for when people got cold and they took all of my sweatshirts and left theirs and like took my shoes like left like one of their vans and the point of this story was basically like i they took one of my favorite sweatshirts yeah and i had this dream of me just walking down the street and seeing some guy wearing this Bates athletics sweatshirt because it's a sweatshirt that no one in florida would have yeah yeah and i would just get to fucking beat the brakes off this guy over a sweatshirt never happened no i never saw him um i would there were a couple times where i was at a stoplight and there were homeless guys laughing Uh at at the car and it could have just been them on whatever but my thought process was like oh my god like he fucking he got it back he fixed the horn (laughs) they they found a bunch of receipts in it for like needles and so it was guys doing like h Oof. and they tried to backtrack and go to the cvs like um 
security tapes to see like who bought it because yeah. the receipt had a timestamp on it and it was just kind of a dead end. Mm. That's a bummer. I uh, I had a a good friend of mine in college had a similar start to your story where he had he parked in his driveway every day and he woke up one morning car wasn't there they were all freaking out filed the report with the police like whole thing uh police get end up getting a call from police like hey we we found your car it's it's parked outside of the chipotle around the corner <laughs> and and he he like immediately realized that the day before he just he drove chipotle was like incredibly close to his yeah. house but he had he was so like hung over that he just decided to drive so he drove to chipotle parked got his chipotle and then walked home and went <laughs> back to sleep after eating it and so it was like a whole they literally filed the like yeah. the police called them where they found your car it was just <laughs> where he had parked it and he completely forgot <laughs> Dude. Fever dream. That's yeah, funny. it was insane. I leave my car unlocked here. Oh, that's good. And uh good to say on camera. Yeah. And well no one knows what car I drive and, and Jeep. It's a black Jeep. And Angus <laughs> Angus was like uh Angus was like, Why do you leave it unlocked? I was like, Well, I just don't leave anything because I don't want someone shattering my window. So I was like, I just don't leave anything in there that I wouldn't want someone to steal. Yeah. Like, what can they steal if I don't leave anything in there? And he was like, The car. <laughs> like, and it it occurred to me. And you would know better than anyone. I would know better than anyone. But um, that's fair. yeah, that's where my life's at. That's fair. Nice. That's fair. That's <sighs> should we fair. do some? Uh, should we do some friend of the pod? Yeah. Did you get submissions? 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 Yeah, I have a few. I've noticed. Oh. Are you scouring like the like? I feel like the YouTube comments had them too. I was looking at the YouTube comments. All right, cool. Um, I don't have any YouTube comment ones for today. Maybe next week, but. Okay. Um, okay, one of these is like insanely long. Perfect. One of my, <laughs> we got uh, time. Perfect. Yeah, we actually we have like a, over an hour. All right, I'm not gonna do that one first. Okay, I'm oh. starting. Start with a short one. Okay. Yeah, ease us into it. All right, this one is from Abby Sharp. Abby Sharp, A Sharps. Yep. All right, her business. <laughs> <laughs> her business idea is a shot send. And she is accepting new names for it, so keep that in mind. Yeah. So Bless the you. shots end. Post grad, you can't celebrate with your friends for birthdays and special days like before. With the shots end, you can send a shot to anyone, and if they don't take it, the driver will throw it on you for rejecting. <laughs> on the shots send <laughs> app, you can pick which shot you'll send, and then it will be delivered immediately after. Like, like yeah. it's like a he drives to their house, <laughs> to the house, to a bar, to a restaurant. I would assume. Yeah. I was thinking, so okay, fun. so one, it's a fun idea, but t- uh, two, I think a more like feasible way to do it is is it's just whatever bar they're at, the bartender hands them a shot. I think having no. a, I think having, no. I think having a stranger travel, yeah, with a to go shot <laughs> is, and then th- and then being like, oh, I got work, and they just fucking throw it in your eyes. Yeah, I do like the idea of like like a registry at the bar that you're having a party at. <laughs> So that's a great idea. Uh, you're you're having your birthday party at a bar, and you can set up a registry so your friends that are out of town can like go online yep. and pay for a Bud Light or a shot or whatever. And then so we uh, just that sounded like an ad for Bud Light. It we wasn't. just really hijacked Abby's idea, but I like yours better. Yeah. A, 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 well, it's it's still her idea. Yeah. It's still yeah. her idea. Yeah. Uh, do you know what a hurricane shot is? No. It's a uh, sounds traumatic, dude. It is so bad. I'll I'll show you the. I actually, can I? I'm not. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna send this to Lauren. Am I pulling this up? Yeah, on you're the pulling TV? this up. You do, you, you you do need to see. We're it. slack it to Brian, right? Yep, slack it to Brian. Slack it to Brian. Because Brian's computer. Slack it to Brian. But yeah, overall, I think that idea is fun. I. It's so sad that that's just the reality of life now. It's like majority of our friends and like people that we want to be doing these special dates with, like aren't like birth. I don't know. It's just. Birthdays, like events, I'm like it can't be there, can't be celebrating. Wait. Uh yeah, well, you make new friends here. Yeah, of course, but it's, it's like, not it's like, like the, your day ones. You yeah, can't really the, be with the, them. Your shy town girls. Yeah. And my and my Dayton homies. And my Dayton homies. Okay. My, your flyers. Um, yeah, my flyers. Did you turn the TV or did I turn the TV on? <laughs> Did I turn the TV on? <laughs> is the screen on? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. But the software thing's in the way. Yeah. All right. yeah cool. Is it? Do we have oh. That? All right. Wait. I'm just going to say Slack it to Brian. Slack, yes. Slack okay. it to Brian. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Trust me. This is worth it. This is worth it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is a hurricane. Put it, put it full screen. This is a hurricane. <laughs> oh, is this you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
What the? F- is that an employee of the restaurant? <laughs> yeah, so Wait, what? That's the waitress. <laughs> What's the stuff she throws? She th- so you take a shot of Fireball. She throws a shot of vodka in your face, and then she slaps you in the face. And this kid said he could do more than me, so we're just going back and forth. Oh my god! All right, that's you get the you get the gist. You can turn it off. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's not a huge <laughs> bummer. So yeah. that's a hurricane shot, and I think I think what we need isn't that insane. What yeah. if it's like a like a like a strong dude that's Is doing it? They usually send one of the female waitresses. Okay, but I have seen it with guys. This is at um, I don't know if I want to shout them out. This is at a place called Margaritas in Winter Park. No, in Orono, Maine. Oh, so Orono, home of the black bears. So home of the black bears. Yes, and um, and this kid. So this, the waitress comes up to us at the table and she's like, these kids over there sent you a hurricane shot. And I'm like, that's so nice of yeah. them. And, and everyone that's sitting next, we're at a dinner table. There's like 10 of us. And my friends that are sitting next to me moved seats. And I was like, okay, there's got to be some sort of like splashback. Some splash element. And I was like, I'm fine with getting like a little wet. Yeah. And, and then everyone pulls their phones out. And I'm just like, okay, this is obviously going to be so bad. <laughs> and uh, and she did that. And then I and then the kid said, we kept sending in, we kept sending them back and forth to each other. And was so it we were that like, guy? It was that guy? And we were like, let's just sit down at one table and go back and forth until one of us taps out. And then neither of us were tapping out. And the manager came out and was like, to the waitress, like we can't, like we can't keep doing this. This is too, yeah. yeah. You're gonna kill the. Um, okay, sorry to hijack that that pitch, but that's I would want to be sending these. Shot sends a good idea. I I think that I feel like now the registry idea is yeah. birthed that birthed from within it. Yep, is probably a good idea. She owns the rights. Yeah, Abby, yep. Abby, Abby, Sharp. Abby Sharp, Abby Sharp. Killed Thank it. you, Abby Sharp. All right, this next one is from my younger brother and his friend. Yeah. Your younger brother? My little brother. Oh. Shout out Sean Hoagland. Shout out Sean Hoagland. And his is he an S-E-A? S-E-A-N, Irish. Our family's Irish. Oh, I thought that was like a fraternity. Oh, is he S-E-A? <laughs> S-E-A. <laughs> yeah, Ru- Rush Sean, dude. Yeah. S-E-A-N. He's, uh, uh, he's a sophomore at the University of Dayton. That is correct. Bingo. How'd you have that off the top of your head? I am good. He is good. I am well read on the Hoaglands. All right. Know, yeah. <laughs> so Sean Hoagland and Johnny Cipriano. This is one of his good friends. Johnny wow. Cipriano is a great name. Yeah, wow. That guy'll, that guy'll put a hit name. on you, dude. Strong. He's yeah. Absolutely got mobbed. No, he's the guy that, hu- that they hired to kill you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. What is it? What do All we right. got, Sean? So he's Sean's been really into pickleball recently him and my sister were like playing pickleball a lot when he was home okay and he said that a pickleball bar would be a wonderful business idea what was that noise this is like this is like (laughs) like, do you hate this yeah (laughs) why are you shitting on Sean no I'm not shitting on Sean it's just like I feel like like pickleball people are kind of insufferable yeah they're the worst like this would be this would do well in like Williamsburg yeah okay okay all right, continue. I'm okay. sorry. I feel. I already feel like. <laughs> well, an now asshole. Sean isn't gonna like you. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry, I'm Sean. Kidding, I'm fine. sorry, Sean. Okay, well, he just said pickleball bar. Today's day and age, obviously, drinking and doing activity is the new norm. Examples: <laughs> top golf, axe throwing. So he says you can rent a court and drop in and play whenever. And he envisions this as an old neon themed bar with black courts, bright neon lights. You throw on a DJ and some alcohol, and it sounds like a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like. I think it, it exists. I, I, I think it definitely does. I think it's. I think it would do well. It just, I just, yeah, I guess. I can't really fine. understand it because I don't play pickleball, but like the people that do enjoy it, obviously it's like such a community. It is. It so is. They would like it. <clears throat> no, it would be like, it would be a hit. And I mean, if you go to like, and you walk around like New York, they have like everything is turned into like pickleball courts and stuff. <sighs> Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Down the boardwalk in Venice. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Here's what happened in Sean's brain. Sean, we've all been there. We've all been a sophomore in college, and we're like, we're like, what does this need? This is fun, but what would make it better? Yeah, being hammered. And and Sean was playing pickleball with what's his name? No, with my sister Johnny Siriani. With Johnny Siriani. No, <laughs> Johnny and Cipriano. I had a buddy Close. named I had a buddy named Johnny <laughs> Filoni. There we go. They should they should hang out. There we go. Not sure why I felt like I had to tell you guys that. Sean, Sean, Sean. One day. And I haven't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. You're gonna want to do things sober. You and I. Yeah, I like the disclaimer that you haven't gotten <laughs> yeah. there yet. <laughs> um, and 
I love your idea. I believe it already exists. And I think our best bet is we do it and then we get bought out by Top Golf. I agree. I it is yeah. It's a good idea. It's it, a good it would idea. do well. It's just like I just don't like. I think the pickleball thing was has been a little overdone. I I got a I got a hundred and fifty dollar pickleball paddle because I was like I'm gonna. Oh. Uh. I played like three <laughs> times in a week and was like and was like this is my new thing. Went and got the fucking swaggy paddle. Yeah. And then I, I just am still on athletic. So it did. Yeah. It was graphite, I think. Like a pencil. Yeah. You're right with it? Wait. I think you could if graph graphite pickleball. Yeah. Pickleball paddles. Graphite. Yep. Yeah. 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 I feel like we're a little harsh on Sean. I, I'm sure he's a nice <laughs> guy. He can take it. It's okay. Okay. Um, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, that yeah, that's uh that's fine. Nothing oh. crazy. Sorry, bruh. Sorry, um, Sean. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, bruh. Your sister's great. She's great, great. Which okay. Does. The next one is from my Friend from high school. His name's Alex Donnelly Maine. Okay, I feel like you're stacking the deck in your favor. Yeah. <laughs> to, be, are... to be fair, hey, let we me just shout the... out our our fans. Love you guys, but we need some more DMs coming in. Okay, all right. Because I didn't get the best ideas this week. Just being honest. Okay. So this okay. is what I had to work with. Yep. All right. This is long though. So wait, this is Alex, your friend from what? High school. Boy or girl? Boy. Okay. This is like an essay. Okay. Oh, this is the long one. Lay it on us. Hey, Playdate Pod, I have a business pitch I'd like to run by you. It's actually less of a business pitch. It's more of an addition to traditional business meetings, the jersey swap. Yes. In modern culture, business negotiations typically conclude with a handshake and maybe a press article. To boost engagement and to illustrate harmony amongst the parties involved, I think we should make the jersey swap a customary practice to conclude business meetings. Yep. In soccer, the captains will trade banners from their respective teams as a sign of respect. In the NFL or NBA, at the end of regulation, we often see players trade jerseys with opposing players, Mm -hmm. and occasionally those players will sign their jerseys. Again, a sign of respect and an appreciation of the game and admiration of the opposition's valiant Valiant. valiant efforts. Business negotiations can be difficult and hard fought, but should still celebrate all efforts involved. I'm not saying that Sarah from the M&A team should trade her scarf with Matt from HR's tie. Because that's what I was thinking, so I'm so glad he cleared that up. Wait, he was not thinking? No, he's not thinking Sarah from HR is going to trade her scarf with Matt from tie. It can be anything. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) your company has a few branded Yeti coolers lying around. Perfect. You can't have too many mugs in their apartment. Maybe a fruit basket. Who doesn't love fruit? Put in the break room. It'll get eaten by end of day. Anything to show grace and many things. Making the jersey swap a customary practice in corporate America will make this cutthroat, cold, and greedy world a little bit friendlier. Thank you for your time. Okay. I like it. I I like it. That um, was so long. So long, but I I love it. But here's my one thing. I kind of wish it was literally trading articles of clothing that's what i i think he i think he buried himself at the end there i think it should be like you take your shirt off do you know like cars do you know what car salesmen do after their first sale have you seen this no the guy comes up and he cuts your tie like the, your manager comes up and cuts your tie off that's cool wait what yeah after your sale he cuts your tie off and you like keep it so like after you after you and sarah from hr get to the bottom of whatever problems you've been having she takes off her blouse or blouse and you take off your shirt and then for the rest of the day matt from hr is matt from matt from accounting is wearing sarah from hr's blouse yeah sarah from accounting sarah from hr is wearing matt from accounting's brooks brothers button down i like i think it's yeah i think it should be shirts it's a good idea yeah a, si- a signature could be cool too but i i like it it's a good way of building camaraderie what was that last one camaraderie Com- camaraderie all camaraderie. right should we let's let's should we pitch each other yeah, I got some. I got some fucking gold on this note. Do you pad. really? Yeah. All right. You want me to break your brain right now? <laughs> yes. All right. Ready? I got hard dip. It's a tailgate staple. <laughs> Hummus, vegetable dip, tzatziki, whatever you're feeling, but it's it's <clears throat> alcoholic. Oh, <clears throat> I thought you meant. I thought you meant it was rock hard. No, and it's you like soft. ate it by itself. No, it's I like, love that. Like hummus and pita chips, but you're getting a little buzz on. That's so great. It's perfect for tailgates. You can do, you could do a, a cheese dip. What makes it alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> what makes it alcohol? The, the vodka. The vodka, it. yeah. Uh, I blacked out again. Oh, well, that um, would happen if you had too much hard dip. Uh, it's I, alcoholic I, dip. I love it, and here's why. 
when you're at a when you're at like a family gathering, mm. there is always an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent that's kind of keeping an eye on how many you've had. Yeah, and you feel like you got to sneak them mm-hmm. or something. This you just have like four or five chips. Yep. And you got a steady buzz going on. Exactly. Does it taste good? Tastes awesome. Cool. That was my main concern. Yeah, it tastes, you can't even tell. Do, <laughs> um, how do you measure, like, what's one shot? Uh, I think, like, th- like three scoops. Three, is a shot? Yeah. Yeah, so you can still snack. I love it. Because you, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I Hard g- dip. I got... Um, that would go um, very nicely with my cucumbers that I have over here. <laughs> what do we say about the cucumbers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it would, it would. You're, Except, you're leer. Your face when she said that was like, I'm going to fucking kill you for some reason. Can you cute? Can I get one? Do you want one? Are they yeah, salted? Cute me. No. Cute me. Cute me. <laughs> Do you want one? Cute me. Mm-mm-mm. Off. <laughs> I forgot how awful these are. Yeah, they're not good. What? You, they're good when you salt them. Also, Ooh, wait, now it's like you guys are doing ASMR with the cucumber. <laughs> All right, what's your... All right, ready? Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. This one's like Rhine. Dramatic. All right. <laughs> what's the worst part? What's the worst part about flying? Uh... Getting getting patted down at TSA because you had a bomb. <laughs> What's the worst part of flying once you're on the plane? Your legs cramping right next up. Next to you stinks. No leg room. No leg room. What and and what what makes what what takes away even more leg room? Big people. Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt, da- Matt Damon <laughs> would take it away when they recline. When they recline. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they recline and 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 you were laying forward and you had your position all figured out and then mm-hmm. this guy in front of you fucking jacks it around. Well, that would really make it weird. Yeah. Um, it's a bike lock that you put on the seat in front of you so that their seat can't go back. That's crazy. Yep. I'm a recliner. Same. I am too, but I don't want the person in front of me to do it. Yeah. It's a bike lock. They would notice that immediately, wouldn't they? No, it's invisible. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, no, it's uh it's like one of those things you lock the steering wheel to your brakes so that someone can't steal your car. They got that? Yeah. Hmm. Um uh, it's one of those, but it just like it like binds the three seats in front of you together. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. that people on either side can go back, but he can't. I like that. I think that would help. Yeah. It w- he would probably call the flight attendant. <laughs> and then the flight attendant would be like, hey, Hey, Get take this that invisible bike take lock that off. giant bike lock off. <laughs> well, so my question is, what if someone is going to use this on you? <gasps> uh, I, I, you also, anyone who owns it has the key to every other one. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, as long as people don't start catching on, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like that. Yeah, that was so bad. No, I like that. You hated it. Oh, well. No, I You like hated it. it. It could be worse. It could be pre-cocktailed shrimp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lay right. it on, man. I got pre-cocktailed shrimp. Okay. Everyone loves a shrimp cocktail, but yeah. no one wants to go through the effort of making a shrimp cocktail unless they're at like some sort of soiree that already has yeah. herbs or something. So these come, they're frozen shrimp, but they're pre-covered in cocktail sauce. Oh, God. And when you... When you when you cook them, they you cook them or you what do you do with thaw them? frozen shrimp? Thaw them out. Yeah, you thaw them out, and then they got a layer. They got like a a layer of cocktail sauce around them. I got a good one. I got a good addition to that. Okay. You know how like they're they're frozen in ice, and then you have to like melt them, then the, take them out of the water, and then put the cocktail sauce. The wa- they're frozen in the cocktail sauce, so when it thaws, th- they're already in it. They're already in it. I like that a lot. That's why we make a great duo. That's why we have a podcast. Yeah, we have a podcast. To piggyback off of what we were just talking about, you're from Boston. I am. Uh, Boston Bruins legend Milan Lucic was in the studio via Zoom for <laughs> the Empty Netters podcast this week. Dan and Chris Powers, hottest guys I know. Best, legitimately the best looking guys I know. Very knowledgeable on hockey. Some of the most enthusiastic guys I've ever met. Either. They they have they have a face for being on screen they they're just 
and they got a face for TV and a voice for radio. They baby. do. They are just they're they're hitting home runs every week. They're empty netters pod. They're hitting slap shots. They're right? hitting slap shots every week. Uh, check out the empty netters pod. It's part of the Almost Friday family. They record right here in the same studio, the Will and Rusty's Playdate Studio. We're working yep. on getting that as the official name. Um, <laughs> but they're crushing it. They have new pods every week on Wednesday. A little, little, little derivative, um, but yeah, it's kind of what we do. Kind of our thing, even though they started it first. Kind of felt like we obviously were gonna do that. Yeah. Um, but listen to the Empty Nighters pod. They have a great. In, they're talking with Milan Lucic about the 2011 Cup run, about what it was like to play with you know all these goats, Chara Bergeron, Tim Thomas, uh, and many more. Uh, Tuka Rask, Hall of Famer. Was he on that team? Future Hall of Famer. Uh, yeah, I think Tim Thomas. Was on the team starting the season. I think Tuca came in during the playoff run. It was one of the, it was like sort of a flurry Matt Murray situation where he came in and won cool. the cup and kind of earned the job after that. Nice. So you kind of feel for Tim Thomas. He deserved that one. He might have been the one who won it. I don't really remember. I don't want to go on a hockey rant. Okay. If you want to hear hockey rants, empty netters, empty pod. netters pod, baby. Listen, listen to it, like it, love it, love it. And anyway, as you were saying, we'll jump right back into where you were about to say that. I was just talking about that's how... Where cut that's where... Oh, I was going to say I bought a meatloaf-flavored vape, and my, now my arms won't bend. That's probably what we were talking about in the pod. I don't remember. Back to the pod. All right, I got... Um, it's an AI jingle. Mm. You type in your to-do list, and it makes a catchy jingle out of everything you have to do for the day. I like this. So... You can walk through. You can walk down the sidewalk, and you can be singing the song, and you know you know everything you have to do that day. Yeah, I like it. wash the car. Yeah, take out the dog, change the trash, and then go to the store. Yeah, hang with Will, yeah. do our podcast. Yeah, brush your teeth and wipe your bum. Tell your loved ones you're in financial trouble. You need some help right now. Go to the doctor and get that thing checked out. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Right? Go to the store, take out the dog. Hey, say hi to Lauren and take it to lunch. Take give Will a, give Will a, a hug. Say what's up. Do your homework and then go to bed. Look at pictures of horses in bed before you fall asleep <laughs> so you dream about them that night. Yeah, I love it. Right? All right. That's I cool. love it. Thanks. Yeah. I feel like it would make every day so happy. It would make yeah. every day awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and also, I feel like what so you said it was an app. That, uh, yeah, that creates yeah. It? yeah. You type in, okay. you type in everything. I feel like depending on your mood that day, you could choose from different themes, yep. and then it'll like create exactly what you're looking yes. for. Yes. Yeah. That like, was exactly what. If I you have a bad day, it's like. <laughs> Go take out the dog and then wallow in pity. This sounds like a Phoebe Bridgers song. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you for what you did, and I miss you like a little kid. I faked it every time, and that's all right. Fell on hard times a year ago, was hoping you would let it go, and you did. I watched did. The, her tiny desk twice this weekend, so yeah. let's say morale. Let's just say. Is that a few Bridgers sweatshirt? Yeah. It's, I didn't know crazy. she had a tiny desk. She does, yeah. Oh, I need to watch that. Yep. Yeah. All right, lay it on me. Uh, five and it's five and one. <laughs> Soap, shampoo, yep. sour cream, oh. baking soda, toothpaste. Why sour cream? Because think about it. You have all these different little bottles around your house, and it's you, you waste money, you waste time. You always like the sour cream is like. I feel like I always end up throwing out half of the sour cream. Yep. So it's like, oh, if okay. you're already also yep. using it for baking soda, toothpaste, shampoo, and soap, then it's like, <laughs> you're all, you know what I mean? It's just like keeps, it's easier. I also am now realizing, I guess, conditioner is separate. You still have to buy conditioner. Yeah. But I feel like this feels like a no-brainer to streamline sort of your eating and cleanliness habits. And do you know what, what ingredients it's going to be comprised of? No, no, that's not. That's we're high level. Yeah, we're remember, high level, guys. We don't, we don't, we think big picture. Yeah. Someone made a. I'm trying to find it. Someone made like a. It's like Barbasol 23 in one. Oh, really? And it's, it's like they took my idea. There's is no. There's is like it just slowly devolves. It's like shampoo, conditioner, shaving cream, body wash, motor oil, 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks so real, too. It's kind of like, like, yeah, maybe I wasn't original. Well, I also had Shirtalizer, which is, you know how you always, like, you know how there's, like, always T-shirts? You're like, what the hell happened to that T-shirt? Yep. Well, this is the biode- all T-shirts, Shirtalizer T-shirts are biodegradable, so it's, like, you don't have to worry that you're like, hurting the environment by losing them. They're wait, how your your main concern when you lose a T-shirt is like, <laughs> oh, I just littered. Yeah, I mean, it's one of them. <laughs> Pretty crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't say. I wouldn't go as far to say it's. I, Jesus Christ. I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's my main concern, but it's one of them. I got. It's a VPN. Okay. Yeah, I love that. And no, it's not a VPN. It's a software that. Uh, automatically masks your tabs and your history so like you don't have to worry about what you're googling it all looks like smart things okay oh oh it replaces it with replaces it with like with like why are, are the cosmos so deep mm, got... and some and someone would look over at your phone and be like that guy is asking the right questions wow instead of like busty milf yes right video busty milf video it, I mean, pretty much just Busty Milf videos. It's it only knows how to do. We're guys. We're gonna, we're guys, we're gonna watch video. Busty Milf videos. Yes. I feel like this goes hand in hand with the share pods. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck, it's the same. Wait, did that guy make well, share no, pods? No, no, Wait, didn't we, a guy make a? Yes. Wait, can, um, we sh- can we show this also, Migo? Well, no, he's sending them. Yeah. To oh, us. okay. Amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I am so excited to actually wear the share pods. Yeah, for everyone, yeah. for everyone listening, we have an amazing listener who has. Sending us some prototypes of fr- from the first episode, yeah. right? Can I actually give you a fourth one because I don't feel strong enough about that last one? A hundo p. All right, it's prostitution okay. for friends. Oh God. Um, the like, you pay, you're paying for friends. Okay. And they come over. It's kind of like an escort, but there's no, there's no like silver lining that you feel like you're gonna have to have sex. There's no hand stuff even. Sometimes there's hands. There's sometimes hand stuff, yeah. Well, it's like if that's where the friendship gets... Fuck, that one's bad, too. I went f- two for four today. That's okay. That's uh, bad in 500. <laughs> there is a way that prostitution for friends could be cool, but I haven't figured it out yet. It's like Bumble BFFs. Yes. Except, is. so you, you don't have to go through the work, I guess. No, no, you no, just you're pay just, you just yeah. pay them, but they want... To be friends. I like the idea that they're still like out on the street corners, but instead of dressing <laughs> slutty, they're like seeming really yeah. fun. Yep. Yes. They're That's like building exactly. Legos on the street corners. You're like, oh, I'll take that guy. Oh, I'm gonna take that guy. All right. Should we do some drafts? Uh, we're guys. We're guys. We're gonna draft. We're gonna do drafts. God. All right. The people wanted it, and we're just we're just we're just doing it again. Sluts for what they want, ladies and gentlemen. It's sayings three. Here are more. Sayings that don't exist. Yeah. Sayings right. that don't exist, part trace. All right. We got sinking like a dumbbell and kick. Wait, no, no, no. I got to start over. <laughs> I don't want to start with that one. Okay. Well, now I'm going to be thinking about it. You might as well just do it. All right. You go first. Wait, no, no, no. No, no, no. This is a nightmare. We've already fucked this up. No. All right. We got more sayings that don't exist. First one, I got knocking dominoes one at a time. It's oh. uh, you have your you, like when you're too you got your hands in something too much when you could have just kind of let it go f- after the start. Yes, like someone who's like overly involved in something that's already on the right trajectory. I like that. They're knocking dominoes one at a time. It's a good visual. How are they doing it though? I feel like that's like honestly more impressive. They're knocking them backwards. They're knocking them backwards. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, I think dominoes can go either way. I got um. <clears throat> I got every village needs its idiot. Okay. So, you know, like a lot of people will feel like they're worthless, but in reality, you're you're a cog in in like a larger thing. Like we we can't all be we can't all be the best. You you have to No, that's not the way to phrase it. The way to phrase it is is even you bring something to the table no matter how small it is and people need to appreciate that. I like that. Me too. Um, I've got don't wash the sand off before you've left the beach. Nice. Yeah, it's like if you okay. try to be sometimes by being too proactive, you're actually just creating double the amount of work. Oh. Like if you clean all the sand off your while you're still on the beach, you're just gonna have to do it again later. So do things at the right time and don't make more work for yourself. Yeah. Okay. I got um even instant ramen takes a minute. Mm. So 
That's good. Thank you. It basically means like nothing is going to happen no matter how perfect the circumstances are. Things take time. I like that. You got to be patient and ride with it. Yep. That's great. I've got sinking like a dumbbell in quicksand. Like someone's just on a on a very quick downward trajectory. They're sinking like a dumbbell in quicksand. That one is so good, but also really stresses me out. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy visual. Yeah. Uh, really quick commentary on quicksand. Yeah. I feel uh, like... I feel like I when I was growing up, I thought it was going to be a bigger, bigger part of my life. Than it actually was. No, I was... Why did we both just... That was so mean. That was so, so, so mean. It's because I was just talking about it with my friends. But well, we knew it was... Is that what you were going to say? That it, you thought it was going to be a bigger part of your life than it was? Not those exact words. <laughs> it was what that. It say? was that. Okay. Continue. What were you going to say? What were you going to say? That was mean. We shouldn't really come at you like that. No, I was just going to... No, no, just continue. It was because it was because that was exactly... It was exactly... What you were not the exact phrase. Then you got to prove us wrong. Oh, no, I don't feel like talking anymore. Continue. I got it. Well, we, have a, we, have a, we have a podcast, so you have to feel like talking all the time. Yeah, I don't feel like talking I today. don't feel like talking today. <laughs> um, I got, you got to kill the cow to make your steak. I like that. I like that. Sometimes, you see, I appreciate you. Yeah, it's um, good. It's basically like in order in order to get something good, you got to you got to trim the fat and you got to sometimes get rid of something that you might really love in order to get You got to make hard decisions. Got to make hard decisions. Yeah. I like that. What do you think, Warren? What do you do you like that one? I wasn't listening. Oh Sorry. my god! Okay, <laughs> uh, I've got. Oh my god! Don't break the yolk on the first bite. Nice. Um, what does it mean? It, <laughs> <laughs> it means that sometimes you got to ease into things, and if you go too aggressive right from the get go, you kind of ruin it. So you know, it's like don't blow your load. Yeah, it's sort of like don't. Yeah, exactly. This one sucks. You ready? I'm ready. This one's bad. You can't take mayo off your sandwich. <laughs> so like you it's you can always put more mayo on. Yeah. Again, this one's pretty literal. It's more just like advice. <laughs> if you if, if you're making a sandwich, you can put a little bit on, see how that works. Yep. Go from there. If you get a little trigger happy, you can't take it off. Yep. I like that. Thanks. Um Let's Lauren, not, we're, Lauren, we're sorry. This is my last okay. one. I got, let's not tear up the hardwood. Yeah. Um, sometimes old things are good, and sometimes things are classics and are around for a reason. Like, you know, sometimes people will tear up hardwood floors and put, like, crappy crap in there. I got another one. This one's very literal to your life. Okay. Not literal. This one's, you can, you'll be able to relate to this. Termites travel in packs. Yeah. People that are destructive to your life and your well-being, uh, hang out with other people that have the same goal mm-hmm. and you don't want to get caught up with those guys because like, they're, they're they're counterproductive to your life. Yeah. They'll eat all your wood. They'll eat all your wood. I like that. And they get in your bed. <clears throat> my termites, I got my, I got the, my house is getting tented on Friday. Oh, good. And then they'll be gone. Where are you going? A hotel? Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, with me? Yeah. Nice. All right, cool. Um, should we do right. bands that don't exist? Yeah, we've got bands that don't exist. Bands that don't you exist. You want to start us? I'll start us off. Um, honorable mention, because I already said this one to Will a while ago, Tabitha's Crying. Yeah, that's a good if one. If I start a band, I'm naming it Tabitha's Crying. That's a great one. Who's Tabitha? Uh, I actually don't know. She's I don't know what Tabitha is. Bawling her eyes out wherever yeah. she is. She is so sad. All right, I got Cosmic Uprising. I like that. They're a reggae band with a intergalactic twist. <laughs> so I like that. They, all of their songs are about are about traveling through the cosmos. And I feel like I've talked about the cosmos a lot today, and I don't know what they are. I love the cosmos. I love the cosmos as well. Um, yeah. Cosmic like uprising. All right. My first one is Souls for Sale. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Souls for Sale is like, it's like, like sad metal emo grunge. Souls. Can I get a verse? Souls for Sale? Yeah. So, I've never. Oh, wait. wait. What do you mean? Like, what would they say? They'd be like, they'd be like, I'll never find a place in this world yes. for me. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm fired up on Souls for Sale. That yeah. was great. Dude, you have this ability. I don't know what it's called. It's the equivalent of freestyle rapping for, you do like three genres. Will can do it in folk, like pop punk and whatever 
whatever souls for sale sings yeah that was kind of pop punk i guess i got eric peters and the bastards okay um eric's obviously the front man no, uh, duh D- yeah he's a guy he's gonna be the front man <laughs> that. um eric peters and the bastards they they're kind of like um i don't know what the genre is but i know they're barefoot while they're doing it Ooh, shout out um you want in on this, Lauren? Mm, don't do that. You want in on this, Lauren? No, I, have we... a- I have athlete's foot. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. I'm kidding. Um, uh. Okay. And they, they're they like a jam band. I like that. He also, like, it's very literal. He only plays with people whose fathers left them. <laughs> oh, perfect. Because they bring, like, a certain edge to it. Yeah. I like they do. Yeah. You said, oh, perfect. Yeah. I did say, <laughs> oh, perfect. All right. I got spit montage. Yep. Spit montage yes. is heavy metal. Okay. <laughs> How heavy? Ah, like that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scream out almost. Scream out, yeah. Um, do they wear paint? No, they're naked. <laughs> <laughs> What's their name again? Spit Montage. Spit Montage. What are they, they're fans of the Spitheads? Uh, duh, they're, 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 they're going to be the Spitheads. They're going to be the Spitheads. All right. Would you guys ever Spit go, takes. Would you guys ever go to like a heavy metal concert? No. I don't think you could pay me to I go. I don't think you could either. I would. Try everything once. I'd probably scream and throw up. Yeah. All right. I got... uh so scary. I got Clementine Social. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Billy Langdon helped me out with that Sounds one. Sounds like an indie, like like a California like surf jam band. Do you know, do you know Rex Orange County? Yeah. Similar vibe. Because of the orange Clementine thing? That might have been where it, why my brain <laughs> made its way there, but it's like a, it's like a very happy. Um, they're, it's very encouraging. But you don't you don't want to listen to it alone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Too sad. I won't. I got a fatal crunch. <laughs> They're what all, are they saying? fatal crunch is is pretty. It's, it's all pretty metal band. Yeah, it's a metal band. <laughs> it's another metal band. Do you listen to metal? Where is this coming no, from? I just I just I just know what I just know how to come up with names for their band. Yeah. Fatal Crunch is good. Yeah. Um, all right. I got the Curled Hurlers. Oh, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, it's like two different sports. The Curled Hurlers is, they're an Irish band mm. with a Scottish influence. Okay. So very heavy on the bagpipes. They wear kilts and and uh they just fucking jam. The curled hurlers. The curled hurlers. The curled hurlers. The curdles. Yeah. It's the, cur- the curdles. The curdles. Curdle. Crumbles. What are their fans called? The curdles. Hur- hur- hurl heads. Curl heads. <laughs> curl- <laughs> the curdles. <laughs> curdles. There we go. Okay. I've got uh, kids on bikes. Yep. This one is kind of like lighthearted, like fun, like indie pop. Yep. Can I get a verse? Um, yeah, let me, Kids on Bikes is going to be like, uh, heading down it's like, to the middle school. Yeah, it's like, that's just freaking out on yeah. the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you got California me. sun, don't make me run. Da, 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 da. San Diego, you Oh, oh we're see. coming down to the edge of the water. Right. And I told you not to go, but one time for good, can you just stay? It's impressive. Kids on bikes. <laughs> um. All right, I got. <laughs> what happened there? I got uh, <laughs> I got halfway to Scooch. I like that. They um. They're like country, I guess. They're country, maybe halfway to Scooch. I, I don't know. I hadn't thought about what they do. What do you think? Halfway to Scooch would halfway to Scooch seems alt ska punk. <laughs> <laughs> you love alt ska. They are halfway. No, halfway to Scooch is like blues mixed with mm. rap. It's sad blues rap. rap. I like that. Sad rap. Uh, that's all the band names. Nice, Lauren. You got a band name? You got to come up with one on the spot, or we're not going to we're not going to say anything until you say one. Um, I don't have a band name, but I do have a funny story. 
yesterday. Can I tell it or are you guys still? You have to give a band name first. I don't have a band name. You have to say something. Um, The Lemons. Terrible band name. Terrible band name. The Lemons. Mailed it in. I'd listen to Lemons. Yeah, that's fine. I'd listen to them too. Okay. All right. Tell us your story. So yesterday with some of my friends, we were just talking about like, High school parties and like running from the cops. Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever have to do that? Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, so sophomore year, I was running from this house and I basically ran down a driveway with n- there's nowhere to go, nowhere to go. And a cop walks up to me and he asked me my name and I said my name was Marie Mary Smith. That is the worst out yep. alias of all time. Yep, and he took me to the police station. Wait, you got taken? You got arrested? You got taken downtown? Just to the little Wilmette local station. Wow, and what happened? Um, I didn't get nothing. Nothing like horrible happened, but I had to call my mom, and then I told her the story about my name, and I just think it's so funny reflecting back because I'm yeah. like, wh- what was going through my head? Marie, Marie Mary, Mary Smith. Marie Mary Smith is Insane. possibly the worst name you could have. I mean, I'm been. terrible like, lying. So it did he ask sense. for a middle name or did you? Just no, give it to him? <laughs> no, I just gave it to him. When I, I don't know, I just had to share it. Though. My favorite. That is uh, funny. That is funny. My favorite, like getting caught. Drinking one was, uh, we're leaving this football game. Yeah. And we didn't know that the guy that we were messing with was like an off duty cop. So, we're, like, as we're walking away, we hear him, like, on his phone be like, hey, grab these kids on the way out. And the cop comes up to us, like, brings us over. And he's like, which looking back was the least professional way to figure out if these kids were, these teenagers were drinking. He goes, he puts his fingers out and he's like, all right, you guys are all going to blow on my fingers and then I'm going to smell it. And figure out if you guys have been drinking. He was just it. a freak. <laughs> and so he goes down the line and like he gets me and he's like, Yeah, you've been drinking, but go sit down, whatever. Gets to my buddy Bigo and he goes, Put your put your fingers out. He goes like this. And and blows through his nose on the cop's finger, being like being like, he, this guy won't be able to tell that I just used my nose. Yeah. And he looked at him like he was the dumbest kid <laughs> alive and told him to go sit down. And uh, we thought we got away with it. First period, like next day, over the loudspeaker, it's like, <sighs> well, blank, 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 blank. And lifts off like six kids come down to the main office. And we it was my first week of high school, first week of senior year, and got a two day suspension. Jesus, that's yeah. tough. I had a I was on a ski trip <laughs> in West Virginia in like high school, and this some kids decided like we were all just we were I was like very young at this point, so like we weren't like we didn't have like fakes or anything, but we were just like in the hotel room drinking, playing GameCube, and some kid got like caught one like two of the kids tried to go to the bar, got caught with a fake, and the state troopers they were West Virginia state troopers made them. They were like, take us back to where you're, you're staying, like your hotel room. And they come in the room. And the state troopers <laughs> come in. They came into our hotel room where we were drinking, which is like, yeah, we're underage, but we're like in our own hotel room, not bothering anyone. Hold up a breathalyzer. Like, we're breathalyzing everyone in here. And I was like, oh, my God. And this one girl started bawling. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like, it's okay. It's okay. It's just scary having all these police in our – or all, I said all these, like, hotels in our police room. And the cop goes, what'd you say? And I was like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you got hotels in your police room. I think you've been drinking, buddy. Oh I was like, gosh. in hindsight, the cr- these guys were on the most insane power trip of all time. So I was like, can I go to the bathroom? And they were like, sure. So I brushed my teeth in the bathroom because I thought that was going to make me pass a breathalyzer. And then when I got back, they just left. Oh, they just left? The, yeah. I love the visuals. It was just like, like they were scaring us. Yeah. But it's still like psycho. No, they just broke in. Well, I mean, they, they, we got a knock on the door, so we opened it because we thought it was like and our they, friend. And then it was the West Virginia State Police, which is like when you're when you're 16 and drinking alcohol, like in your mind, it's logical that the police are going to knock on your door and come in. Yeah. But so it was like, oh my God, it happened. But in retrospect, that's insane. Yeah. It's no, such that's... a real fear where you're like, in yeah. your, you're in your like own basement. Yeah. And you're like, like they, if they wanted to, they could bust down these fucking doors. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Well, thank you guys. Episode six was a blast. We are proud of all of you for listening. And we will see you next week. <laughs> We're proud of you for week listening. For episode You're- seven. Love ya. <laughs>